Hello and welcome to New Blue FX Tips and Techniques. I'm Marcus Johnson with New Blue. Today we're going to be taking a look at New Blue's Film Effects collection. Film Effects provides you with a set of powerful tools to make your video look like it was shot on film. Using Film Effects, you can make your video look like the latest Hollywood blockbuster, a home movie from your childhood, or even an old silent film that was left in a drawer and forgotten for a hundred years. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to give your video an old film look. I'll be using some video that I shot at a World War II battle reenactment. Let's start by looking at the Film Express plugin. Film Express provides the easiest and fastest way to add an old film look to your video. Like all new blue plugins, Film Express has a number of presets, and there's a good chance that one of these will do exactly what you want. But I want you to become familiar with the controls, so I'm going to select Reset to None and start from scratch. Now the clip that I'm using here is a little drab and washed out looking. I'm going to start by turning up the Film Gamma control, which will give us a nice deep black level and make the bright parts of the video stand out more. Next I want to turn up the saturation so that the colors really pop. Now the video is looking a lot better, but it doesn't really look old yet. Adding a tint will really help that. I'll change the tint color to yellow, and as I turn up the tint control, you can see that the video is starting to look more like a vintage film. Next, we're going to go to the damage section. Wear adds a medium-sized grain pattern to the video, and at its highest setting, it'll make your video look like it was shot during a snowstorm. For this project, I think a value of about 20 is just right. Spots adds random water spots to your video, and these are a little more subtle, so I'm going to turn it all the way up to 100. Scratches adds black and white traveling lines to your video, and as I turn it up, you'll see more and more lines appear. At a value of 100, you'll have constant thick lines running through your video, but I just want the occasional thin line, so I'll set scratches to about 15. Lastly, we'll go to the camera section. Jitter moves the picture up and down and side to side at the same time, and at its highest value, adds some pretty violent motion to your video. I think this is more effective at a lower level, so I'll set it to 1. Flicker does just what its name says. It makes your video get randomly brighter and darker. Like Jitter, I think this is best used as a subtle effect, so I'll set it to about 8. And here's our finished video. Now for your project, this might be exactly the look that you're after, but if you want a little more control, you can step up to the Film Pro plugin. When you first open Film Pro, you'll notice that it has a number of extra controls compared with Film Express. Now I've gone ahead and copied over several of the look settings that we used in Film Express, but you'll notice that we now also have brightness, contrast, and diffusion controls. Brightness and contrast are pretty self-explanatory, while diffusion adds a glow to the highlights of your video. You can create some interesting effects with diffusion, but for this example I'm going to leave it turned off. Under the damage section, wear and spots are still there, but you'll notice that we now have a selectable pattern control, and we have several different patterns to choose from. I'm going to use splotchy, and I'll turn up the wear control to make it just a little more visible. Scratches now has its own section, and we can choose whether we want black scratches or white scratches, and whether we want them to be thick or not. I'm just going to turn on the white scratches. Density controls the number of scratches on the video, but you'll notice as I turn it up that nothing is happening. Setting a higher depth value will give you more noticeable scratches, and I think a value of about 50 is just right. Now we can go back and lower the density control, and I'll set that to about 25. Lastly, we'll take a look at the camera section. There are now two separate jitter controls. Y jitter makes the video move up and down, and X jitter makes the video move side to side. I just want the video to move up and down a little bit, so I'll set Y jitter to 1.5. You'll also notice that we now have two separate flicker controls. In Film Pro, the flicker control sets how big the changes are between light and dark. If you set it all the way to 100, you'll see some very big changes in brightness. I think a setting of about 15 will work well for this video. Finally, flicker rate sets how frequently the image will flicker. Set it all the way to 100, and the image brightness will change on pretty much every frame. I don't want it to flicker that much, but I do want it to flicker regularly, so I'll set flicker rate to about 50. 
It took a little more time to set up than Film Express, but I'm really happy with the look that we were able to achieve with Film Pro. Now you've probably noticed that the Film Effects package includes three more plugins that we haven't talked about yet. Film Camera, Film Damage, and Film Look. You might ask yourself, if Film Express or Film Pro already have all the controls that I need, why should I use the individual effects? Well, one situation where the individual plugins come in handy is when you're trying to make an entire sequence look like an old film. Earlier this year, I put together a video of my family's summer vacation, and I decided that it would be fun to have an opening that looked like an old newsreel. I applied film look to each clip, and then I placed film damage and film camera on the whole sequence. That way, I was able to control how each individual clip looked, but the damage to my video was consistent across the entire sequence. Now here are the clips that I used. As you can see, I've already applied film look to each one to make them black and white. Now I'm going to apply a single instance of film damage to my entire sequence. The procedure for this will vary depending on which editing software you're using. Now I'll set my wear pattern to splotchy, and I'll set wear to about 35. I'll set spots to 100, like in our previous examples. For this video, I want several different kinds of scratches, so I'll turn on black, white, and thick. We'll set depth to 50, and density to about 20. I want to add some flicker and a little movement to the video, so I'll also add film camera to my sequence. I want just a little movement, so I'll set both Y and X jitter to 0.5, and I want a light constant flicker, so I'll set flicker to about 10, and flicker rate to about 65. And now it really does look like an old newsreel. To really help it look like an old film projection, I've also added a rounded border to my sequence with vignette, which you can find in the Video Essentials 2 collection. Now that you know how to use film effects, why don't you try it out for yourself and take your video on a trip back in time? For more information about film effects, or to see more tips and techniques tutorials, just go to www.newbluefx.com. This is Marcus Johnson saying thanks for watching and learning about New Blue FX. Competitively priced, aesthetically fresh, and ridiculously easy to use.